The Magic Brocade. Once upon a time, long ago in China, there lived an old widow with her three children, Fan, Yi, and Mei. The widow wove brocades, which were famous for their beauty. With prints of flowers, birds, and animals, no one could match her brocades. And by selling them, she supported her three children. Hmm, I've finished for the day. I'd better buy my groceries. She strolled around the market when a picture caught her eye. A painting of a white house surrounded by green fields and a lush garden. Plumed birds flew everywhere and beside the house, a river. How beautiful this painting is. I think I'll buy it. She bought the painting and hurried home. Ban, Yi, Mei, come here and see what I've bought. Ugh! Bought those sticky honey cakes, Mother. They came down and saw the magnificent painting. Isn't it? How I wish we lived in this magnificent place. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Such idle dreams. Mother, did you get those sticky cakes or no? Ah, uh, here they are. Mother, why don't you weave this painting into a brocade? That way, it'll be as if we're already living there. The widow liked this idea put by Sweet May. So from that day on, the widow sat at her loom working on this single creation. After a month, Fan grumbled. Mother, we're tired of chopping wood to earn all our money. Yeah, Mother, can you stop that brocade? It's taking forever to finish. May, who was sitting with her mother, looked at them annoyed. It's all right, Mother. I'll take care of everything. And so she went alone into the forest to chop wood to look after the whole family. She even wove some brocades herself and sold them in the market. Ah, if only my weaving skills were as good as my mother's, then I would have earned much more. The widow burned pine branches for light so she could work at night. The form, and she often pricked her fingers, but she still persisted through. One year passed, then another. She had woven the magnificent blue sky, and the flowers were brilliantly red. At the end of the third year, the brocade was almost finished. <laughs> it's almost done, just one last stitch. Just then, May opened the door and came into the room. Oh, is it almost done? It's finished. See how beautiful it is, my dear. It's terribly lovely, Mother. Fan and Yi both came and peeped in to see what the excitement was all about. Wow, it really is lovely, Mother. That will get us a good amount to live by for months. Ugh, months of sticky cakes. Ugh, stop thinking about those silly things. <laughs> I will not be selling this. This beautiful piece is only for us. But as she spoke, a sharp wind blew into their home, caught the brocade in its arms, and flew it outside. May and her mother ran after it, but the wind carried it far over the eastern mountains. The widow went and begged her sons to find her brocade. Please, please, my dear sons, get it back to me, as without it I shall die. The two of them looked at her and knew she was completely heartbroken. So it was decided that the eldest fan would go and retrieve the brocade. He set off. And after one month, he reached a mountain pass where an old woman sat with a stone horse beside a small house. Where are you going? Uh, east. 
He told her the story of his mother's brocade and then stopped as the old woman's eyes changed color. She looked into the distance. The brocade has been taken to the Sun Mountain. The fairies are copying it. Only my horse can take you there. But you'll have to clean it. Only then will he come alive and carry you to Sun Mountain. That's a lot of work, but I'll do it. You must pass through Flame Mountain without complaining about the heat or you'll burn to ashes. Then comes the icy sea. While crossing, you mustn't shudder, else you will drown. That's too much for a simple brocade. The woman looked at him closely and took out a pouch of gold coins. Well, then you can take this gold and forget the journey. I'll take that. He gladly took the pouch and walked away with the bundle. As he was traveling home, he began to think of the life he could live if he didn't share the wealth. So he set off for the city alone. Back home, the widow waited sadly. He hasn't returned. Ye, ye, could you please go and get the brocade for me? Uh... The widow started to cry bitterly, and so ye went to find the brocade. When he reached the mountain pass, he too found the old woman. Who told the story of Flame Mountain and the Icy Sea. And like his brother, he too took the gold and headed to the city alone. When another month had passed, with no sign of the brocade, May set off to find it. She too came upon the old woman who told her the story. She immediately started to work diligently on the stone horse and soon it looked beautiful. As she admired it, the horse suddenly kicked its heels and came alive. Now up you get. You have a long way to go. And so within moments, they were galloping fast towards the east. When they reached Flame Mountain, the fire engulfed May, but she raced through the raging heat without a single cry. And when she reached the sea, waves of ice crashed on shore, but May and the horse made their way across and never shuddered. On the far shore, she saw a golden palace atop Sun Mountain. Up she went, and inside, found many beautiful fairies weaving copies of her mother's brocade. Excuse me, I have come here to take my mother's brocade back. May I have it? Oh dear, no, you can't. But tonight, we will finish, and then you may take your mother's brocade back with you. The fairies fed her a delicious meal and gave her a comfortable bed. As dawn drew closer, one of the fairies looked at her brocade. It was not nearly as beautiful as the widow's. She decided she could not let that brocade go and so embroidered a picture of herself in the widow's brocade. At dawn, May awoke and saw the brocade lying before her and the fairies gone. Clutching it, she rode off crossing the icy sea and the mountain of fire and reached the old woman. Come here, my beauty. You shall rest after that hard journey. She sprinkled some magic dust on the horse and it turned to stone again. May thanked the old woman and walked home. When she saw May and the brocade, the widow rose from bed, immediately healed. Together, they carried the brocade outside to look at it in the sunlight. And as they unrolled it, a fragrant breeze rose up, and the brocade grew until it covered all the land. The silk threads trembled, and the pitcher sprang to life. Plumed birds darted everywhere. Animals grazed on the bright green grass. The White House stood tall on the hillside, 
Everything was as she had created it, except beside the river. There stood a beautiful girl. This was the fairy who had woven herself into the brocade. Hello, I am from the Sun Palace. Your brocade is so lovely, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't copy it. Well, then, why don't you stay here with me and learn? It is all I can do for you, for what your magic has done for us. And so, the three of them stayed together. The fairy used her powers and told the widow about how her sons had deserted her for their own greed. Ah, it doesn't matter. My May is all I need. The widow invited her neighbors to share the abundance of the fields. May and the fairy soon became really good friends and everyone lived happily. Then, one day, two beggars happened, came that way. May went to ask them if they needed any help. But when she recognized them, she was shocked. What? Van, ye! How dare you come back after leaving us? The two brothers broke down and begged her. They promised to do anything to gain their mother's forgiveness. Wait, May. Let them do as they please. You two, go and work in the gardens if you're really sorry. But mother! May, they are your brothers. If they are really sorry, then they deserve forgiveness. So, Fan and Yi worked hard to show their mother how ashamed they were. And finally, she took them in. How happy a family they were again. We must never forget the love and care another gives us, only to throw it away for greed. We must understand the effort taken and always give back whatever love is taken. 